Hi everyone, my name is Nithya and you are at my floss tube channel, Daybreak Stitchery. This is a channel all about cross stitch. It's the end of the month and that's when I usually show you what I've been working on during the month. I've got finishes, some whips to show you, some new starts, and a big, big plan because I'm doing another craftivism fundraiser for International Women's Day next month. So tons to share with you. I wasn't really sure I was going to make today's video because you know how it is. It's just like there's been so much lately emotionally and there's like layers upon layers of stuff that's wrong in the world. And I think if you're like me, you're kind of, you feel like you empathize with a lot of people and you're not sure how to process everything going on. And at least this is what I've been experiencing. Um, so I almost didn't make today's video, but you know me, I've got things to say, so things are going to be said today. So we're going to talk cross stitch and we're going to talk about some things too. So um, I, I think everything going on in Ukraine is horrible. It's scary. I think it's been really uplifting to see our community come together. Like I, I, I'm, I haven't done anything yet. I've been seeing some things pop up on Instagram for, you know, how to support Ukrainians. And um, if you haven't seen it yet, check out Laura Chico's video. It's a real quick, just six minute video. I'll link it below. Um, she's um, organizing like a whole initiative around um, raising money and um, supporting Ukrainian stitchers. So she's even going to be creating a Google Doc to share with us with a list of Ukrainian you know, designers, which is cool. Um, so if you haven't seen that yet, check it out. And um, Laura, I love talking to Laura. I always learn something when I talk to her too. So I think that's great. And I think just the general outpouring I've, I've been, um, I didn't know about, I think it's Stitchy Princess Black. She's a Ukrainian designer and she's been talking a lot about what's been going on there. She's in Kiev. Um, so I think that whole, it's just been interesting to hear from everybody how to connect with Ukrainian people and get perspective on what's going on. And Laura's video is really important because she reminds us that Ukrainian, um, like cross stitch plays a big role in Ukrainian culture and heritage. And that's true because the neighborhood I used to live in in Chicago was Ukrainian village and they had an art museum and they always had textiles and often with cross stitch. And I'd forgotten about that. So that was really good to see that. Um, so there are lots of ways to support and you could start with Laura's video. If you haven't, you know, not sure what to do yet with that, I'll link Laura's video below and you can check that out. Um, but I also feel like, you know, part of why I didn't want to make this video today is because I had some other feelings that I had to kind of sort out. I've been thinking a lot about this community and how we support each other and um, how we take steps forward with being inclusive and thinking about all the diversity in our community. And I, I feel awful about what's happening in Ukraine. I have Eastern European students. I'm thinking about them. But I can't help also wonder, let's just say wonder about us as a cross-stitch community. Do you think it's unusual or weird or what do you think that we're ready to just like drop everything? I've seen like the posts I've seen in the past few days, we've just dropped everything and go. We're supporting, you know, trying to find ways to support. Do you think it's weird that we don't do that with other um, atrocities that happen? Like I was thinking about, you know, a lot of people stitched the Olympics recently, right? That happened this month too. And I didn't stitch the Olympics. I couldn't, I actually didn't watch a lot of the Olympics at all. I usually do, but I felt weird about it because I was reading about the Uyghur um, situation there, the Uyghur community in China and all the injustice that's happening, like really terrible stuff that's happening there and that's been happening there for a long time. If you don't know Uyghur, um, is a cultural community that's located in China. Actually, they, they are located in lots of places across Asia, all the way stretching through like Turkey, because um, they used to travel, like the groups used to travel along those trade routes there. But the community in China has been persecuted and like really horrible things like, you know, people disappear, <laughs> they're arrested and they disappear, or they're sent to forced labor camps, or there's like forced sterilization of women happening there because they're trying to stop that community from basically populating itself. 
So um, I just, I think it's a curious thing that, you know, we, we like our community rushed to sit the, stitch the Olympics and then there's been like no talk of anything related to that. But then when this stuff happens in Ukraine, we just like drop everything. Do you know where I'm getting at with that? And uh, Uyghur culture has cross-stitch connections. Cross-stitch is in their heritage too. I'm going to link two articles below that have really helped me. One is from the Smithsonian, which is a really good article on just understanding the, the tension there um, in China between Uyghurs and the main, you know, the Chinese government, basically. And then the other one is an article from Sever magazine about culture, just cultural traditions of Uyghurs and cross-stitch is really big. So, um, you know, they have cross-stitch connections too. We just don't, do you think it's just because we don't know about that, that we don't, you know, kind of drop everything and help in the same way? I just wonder, I just wonder, these are wonderings that I've been thinking about and, um, I figured I would run them by you because you're stitchers and you care too. And um, maybe you can share your thoughts on that too. Um, I, I tried to research a little bit Uyghur cross-stitch patterns and I couldn't find any charts. Um, but I did find, and I'll link, I'll try to link it below. There's a like a graphic designer uh, who has pictures on Shutterstock. They're Turkish and they have um, created a bunch of like image files with Uyghur motifs for cross stitch. So I'll link those below just so you can take a look at them. They look, um, they look very colorful and geometric and I'll try to maybe even like put one in here. Um, I'm, I don't remember the name of the artist though, but I'll link their name and their, that Shutterstock page before. Now, let me be clear. This is not a call to current American design, white designers to like run out and go try to create some patterns, please. Like white de designers should not be making money off of communities that are struggling. Like that, please stop charting things and making money off of <laughs> communities that are struggling. Like they need the money more than you do. So this is not a call. Like I'm not requesting to see more representation of patterns stitched by white people who are making money off of them. But I do think it's a call for us to just learn more about that culture and to see if anyone can dig up any information on how, you know, cross stitch in that community. I think that would be really interesting for us to do. I had these similar thoughts um, last summer when, you know, all those bombings were happening in Palestine. I just it gives the same kind of feeling like at least some stitchers were talking about it at that time, which I think is cool. But we didn't like rush out and start fundraisers or anything. Do you think? I just am curious about that. I'm curious about us as a community and why we make those choices. So something for us just to chew on <laughs> for a little bit here. Um, I'll link that the Shutterstock motifs below in those articles in case you're curious. If you participated in Stitch for the Olympics, please take some time to read about what's going on there too. You know, it's it's you're looking to both sides of what's happening there. And let's, let's just keep learning, everybody. Let's keep reading and let's keep learning and let's keep getting ourselves ready to speak up because there's a lot, like all of this is bullying, right? Ukraine is bullying. Um, Uyghurs are bullying. Palestine is bullying. Um, and when we, when we learn more about it, we prepare ourselves mentally for standing up, for being upstanders and trying to speak up on behalf of bullies. And the more practice we get with empathizing with people, even if they're not, I, I don't know any Uyghur people personally, I, I, but I'm curious and I want to know more about it. And I'm, I feel sad when I read about it and those kinds of things shouldn't be happening to anyone. Right. So I want to keep learning about it. And maybe the more empathy we build, the better prepared we'll be to stand up when those bullies come to our yard. Right. Like in Texas. So it's, um, these are things, these are the things. If we're caring people, if we're creative people, we connect with other stitching heritages. And if we're caring people, we care about the people who stitch that stuff. So maybe that's what I that's what I've come around to on that. Thank you for listening. And um perhaps we should start talking about some cross stitch now. I'm gonna grab, I have some finishes to show you. So why don't should we start with those? Let me grab them real quick and I'm gonna be right back. Okay, I've got three finishes to show you. The first one is just about one of the cutest things that I feel like I've ever stitched. It looks like this. Isn't it so pretty? I'll hold it up a little closer. <clears throat> 
So this is called Persian Love, and it's by the fantastic Miriam, who goes by Marumi Crafts on Instagram. And I will link uh, Miriam's Instagram handle below, Instagram um, name below. And so Miriam had created this pattern called Persian Love. It's in, it's the word for love, which Miriam, you'll have to correct me. I was going to look it up before I did this video and I forgot. I, is it Ishk? Because I, I think it's the same thing in um, Hindi too. Uh, but it's a word for love in Persian slash Farsi. And it's just so, so pretty. It's like this beautiful, tiny geometric pattern. And um, I really enjoy stitching this a lot. This is on 18 count dill. This is the leftover 18 count dill from my henna mandala that I showed you finished last month. Um, so I had some leftover fabric from that. And I liked the way that one was stitched in kind of a red to black silks for you. And I love the way the red looked on it. So I, right away, I grabbed this, this scrap after I cut it off from framing from fully finishing the other thing. Um, this had still been sitting out. So I grabbed it right away. And the thread is a uh, color in cotton. It's Merlot, which is a very dreamy red. I would, it's like a brownish red. Actually, it's a very pretty, it would be pretty for a henna pattern too. Uh, it must have come in a thread club. I had belonged to the Color and Cotton Thread Club, so I have, I'm trying to use up stash. Um, I'm no longer in it, so I'm trying to use up the stash that I built up last year. This is the first time the, the shading in this fabric seems to be coming true in the video. This is one of the discontinued colors, though. If it's Picture This Plus, um, did I say it was dill? I think it's dill. And um, isn't that lovely, though? I, I wish they had um, they had discontinued it because they ran out of the materials they needed to dye. It was no, they were no longer able to source the materials, but now I kind of wish they could still do it. It's really pretty. So this is a real fun one. I don't know how I'm going to finish this yet. Um, one idea I had, well, it would make a great pillow. So maybe a pillow or um, I had an idea of maybe this could be the start of like a whole bunch of little like smalls all having the word love in different languages. And then that could go in a journal maybe. So that's just an idea. I'm not really sure yet what I'm going to do with it, but I just so in, so much enjoy this. So this was a free pattern. If you go to Miriam's Instagram page and um, go to her link tree, like go to her profile and then her link tree, um, there was a link to download the PDF for it. And Miriam's already designing new stuff and I just love it. So thanks, Miriam. This was really fun. Like a, a unexpected. It's a start and a finish. It just came out in February, uh, just in time for Valentine's. So I really loved stitching on that. Okay. Now this one you've seen on Instagram, uh, but I haven't showed you here on floss tube. So let me hold it up here to show you. Now, isn't this one pretty dreamy too? So this is the new uh, modern folk embroidery pattern, Isabella's heart. Let me hold it up a little closer so you can see too. I just love it. I think it just turned out perfect. I love these three colors. I would never choose these three colors on my own. They're just so Valentine-y, aren't they? But don't they just look so good together? That pink, that kind of bubblegum pink, and then like a deep red, and that's an off-white. So these, oh, I didn't bring it with me. These are all done in sulky. So the called for threads are the Leo and Roxy threads. There's like a thread pack that goes with it. Um, but I have been on a sulky kick because of my squirrels of Sumatra. That's I'm going to show you shortly here. It's one of my whip go projects and it's stitching up really quick with sulky. So I wanted to try something else. And I think I'm, I think I'm basically a sulky, um, convert. I love it. So let me think of the colors. They had real cute names. The white, um, you're not going to see it very well. It's actually a variegated white. It's like an ecru and a white variegated and it's called parchment. Very, very pretty. It looks like in certain lights, it almost looks like a pearl, like that kind of off-white tone that a pearl has. It's really pretty. The red is, uh, I think it, it's also Merlot. I think it's also a Merlot wine. And then the pink is watermelon. Nice, bright, um, kind of a yummy, delicious pink. And there are lots of enjoyable parts of this pattern. I mean, I, I kind of like that it's these like chunks of full coveragey bits, like that flower, the big flower in the middle, that's all filled in stitches there. My favorite part, of course, is the birds. Let me get you in a little closer so you can see. I mean, <laughs> I just love them. I think they're so pretty. And I love like 
Now I just want to make a huge piece with just like rows of those birds, <laughs> all different colors, because look at how like you could keep the white, right? The outlining and the eye. Oh, did I fill in their eyes? Yeah, I did. Um, but you could change the red and the pink, right? Like, wouldn't it look so pretty with basically you need like a medium color of something and then a dark tone. So maybe like blues, like a medium blue, like a 798 or whatever that is. And then a 939 DMC dark blue, that would look pretty. Or like anything, you could do like a teal and a, um, like a bright purple and like a dark teal or something, you know, any dark color and any medium color. I think it would look so, so nice. I want to put those birds on everything. Put a bird on it. <laughs> I want to do um, Sarah, my stitchy friend, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. I don't know if I can pull it off, but one idea I had, I was listening to Sunshine Stitchers and Gary, not the most recent video, I think, but another, like the one before maybe, they were talking about StitchCon and um, Sarah and I are going to StitchCon. And um, he had mentioned that he had stitched like a name tag for himself and then for everybody at his table. I don't think I could do something like that. But for Sarah and I, I thought about maybe stitching like this bird in our name or something. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to see what I can pull off by this summer. But really, really enjoyed stitching this. You know, it's not as big as you think. I don't have the stitch count here with me. Um, but this was a start, basically a start and finish uh, in February. So technically, I started it right after I filmed my last floss tube, which was like the last couple of days of January. So um, and then I finished it like two weeks ago, maybe a week ago. So if I can do it in a month, this is probably like a weekend or two for some of you who, um, you know, stitch much faster than I do. So very, very happy with that. I have no idea how I'm going to finish this one. I have a, um, hashtag I'm starting. <laughs> I had to write it down. 50 FFOs by 50. So I'm in my mid forties and I thought, wouldn't it be a fun goal? Cause I want to try to like work on whips and finishing things. Wouldn't it be fun to try to finish 50 pieces, fully finish, fully finish 50 pieces by the time I'm 50. That gives me like six years to go. Um, so I'm starting a hashtag with it and, um, I'll, I've never tried putting text in a video before. Maybe I'll try to play around with that here. If I can't figure that out, I'll put it in the description below along with every names of everything I'm using. And um, 50 FFOs by 50 is what I want to call it. I just can't remember if I want to use the numerals or spell out the word 50 for each of those. But anyway, if you want to join in or like make your own, you know, like 60 FFOs by 60 or what, I don't know, whatever you want to do. Um, I think that'd be kind of fun. I feel like it'll like at along with whip go, which is really helping me chip away at my whips. I feel like this is one more thing. It'll just kind of, it'll take me to the next step, which is fully finishing because I have projects that I finished and I just kind of stack them up on a table in our spare room. And then I don't really do anything with them unless I find like the perfect frame or something exactly I want to do with it. So in my, um, and I'm only counting for fin fully finishes. I'm only counting projects that I've started or fin fully finished since I started my floss tube. So I think I'm at 10 so far. It's been a year and a half. And I think I've got about 10 fully finished. I have some like this that are not fully finished yet. So we'll see how that goes. But feel free to join in if that's something that interests you. Uh, I have one more finish to show you. And this is a spoiler. And I'm just going to show you anyway, because I don't know if I'm going to fully finish this or not. So I have been thinking about stitching a small for the smalls exchange at StitchCon and I wasn't going to do it because I felt like it felt it was going to be too much pressure to try to do like everything I've seen when I see people sharing little smalls they've exchanged. They just all look so nice. The finishing is so nice on them and I my skills with finishing are very limited like with hand sewing and things. So I kind of had talked myself out of it and I thought, well, it's your first StitchCon. You don't have to do it. But then I've been thinking, well, maybe I could pull something off. So um, I saw this pattern. This is by um, Sue Hillis. It's my first Sue Hillis. And it's this Broderie à Paris, um, Embroidery in Paris or Stitching in Paris. And it's got like a really pretty, that tray pattern is very, very pretty. Um, but I was looking at this teeny one here, which is supposed to be finished into a needle book. 
And I found the instructions and I cannot remember who does it now, but I will oh, hang on. I'm going to look on my phone real quick because I downloaded a PDF file. I found a, a blogger of a, um, a blog of a sewer who had free PDF download directions on how to hand sew a needle book. So let me just look real quick. If I have it, I'll, I'll share with you what that is. Um, cause I, I don't have a sewing machine. So, oh, here it is. Hand stitched needle book. Sorry. It'll be just a second. Karen Stevens. So the website is www.kzstevens.com. So I'll link it below too. Um, but I'll show you the cover picture. This is a free PDF hand stitched needle book. And so I'm thinking maybe I could try to, I, so, okay. So what did I do? I stitched this, um, the cover of this. It's actually really cute. So this is what it looks like. I'll show you up closer. And uh, it, it took nothing, right? This is just like an evening. It's so small. And th that was part of it too. Like a lot of the, my part of my hesitation in deciding to whether or not to do this, a lot of the smalls I saw still seemed kind of complicated to me with like a lot of color changes, stuff that's filled in. I wanted something that was genuinely like just whip it up and stitch it real quick. So this, this was great for that. And I, from what I've been reading for smalls exchanges, they say that it's nice for you to kind of have a theme to whatever you're giving. And then if you want to put a little couple other little goodies and then you wrap it in something related to the theme so that people who are selecting it know what they're getting. And I do have some leftover wrapping paper from um, some senior gifts I've given in the past. So I have wrapping paper that has like a France, you know, Paris theme to it. So that'll be easy. I'll, I have the wrapper for it. So I think like Paris could be an easy theme to stitch for. Now the question is, can I pull it off into a needle book? And then I thought it'd be cute what I could do if I can pull it off into a needle book. Maybe I'll like actually tuck in some needles um, and like a needle minder. And that would be my little extra goodies to put. I mean, I'm basic. If I pull it off, sorry about this. This is a spoiler, but um, I don't know if I can pull it off or not. So that's why I'm just going to go ahead and share it. So, okay. So what did I use? This fabric, it's color and cotton. I, I think it's an 18 count. Um, it came in a grab bag, so I don't know what color it is. It's a beautiful um, gray with like tinges of lavender in it. I love it. <laughs> I'm so glad it just took up a tiny section because now I have a whole, this was like a 13 by 17. So I have a whole bunch more of this fabric. So let me hold it up and see if it shows. Yeah, it's pretty true to that color. I think what you're seeing. It's got like gentle modeling in it, uh, but it's a gray leaning more towards purple, lavender. And the thread is DMC 115, which I'm just in love with now. And I want to stitch something. What can I stitch in this? I want to stitch something that has a lot of like fill in because the gradient is just beautiful. It goes from this like cherry red. You're not getting the brightness of it there, but it's the brightest, happiest cherry red all the way to like a, the deepest kind of dark garnet color. It's awesome. I love that color. DMC 115. Um, I, I don't know what I could stitch in it, but I want to stitch something else in it. I love it. Okay, so those are, and that, again, that was um, Sue Hillis Designs. And it's Broderie, Broderie à Paris. Uh, Broderie à Paris. So I want to, actually, I should do that tray. That tray is really pretty too. I make it like a, I feel like, I don't really, I wouldn't have a use for a tray, but that would be a really pretty like journal cover, I think. I like it. Like that vine off to the side is really pretty. This is technically supposed to have white in it too. The pattern calls for it. Like these circles here are filled in in white, but I didn't want to mess with it. I liked it the way it looked. So. Anyway, we shall see if uh, that becomes a needlebook or not. I'll keep you posted. Okay, I'm going to grab um, some whips. Let's talk about some whips. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got three whips to show you. Actually, I've got four because I'm including a crochet whip too. So let's start with our whip go picks. So uh, I worked on Squirrels of Sumatra. That was one of the numbers that was called. And I made it to... Where am I at? Okay. Before, what I showed you last month is I had made it across the top here. So this month I made it all the way down to the bottom corner 
And I gotta show you that, that bottom um, border. It's just so, so pretty. I just love it. Those kind of scrolly motifs. Every time I look at it, I just want to stare at it. I think it's just so pretty. Um, so I brought that side border down and then I went down to that bottom border and I got a little bit of some motif done down there too. And then that stretch that goes all the way down from the top to the bottom, that's that string. Did I bring my picture? Let me see. I don't have the picture. I had it set aside and I don't know where it is. So I will try to put in a picture here. Um, did I maybe put it somewhere else? No, I don't have my picture. So um, that line that go here, let me show you where we at right here. So see this motif, this long motif, and then it stretches all the way down to the bottom. That is basically a third, would you say? Yeah, that's basically a third of the way across. So I've gotten my whole way across and then I'm, I've almost had the, this um, corner down here. Um, I've almost had those two corners meet too. So I need to bring this border down, which is, will be easy to do. I have those meet and then all the fill the motifs in the middle. So there's still, I'm not going to fool myself. There's still quite a bit to do on this one. Um, but I do feel like I've accomplished a lot. This has been called twice this year. So once in January and then this month too. And it's on my Whipco board three more times. So I think I can get really close to finishing and maybe even finish it. Um, now, certain borders are really easy. Like, okay, this border was so, so easy to, to do. And it was very repetitive and relaxing to stitch. Because once you got the hang of like the first couple of repeats of it, I didn't even need to look at the other ones to do the new ones. Do you know what I mean? It, it just was so relaxing to do. Now the bottom border was a little bit, bit a little bit more complicated. I had to keep checking the pattern um, to make sure I was doing that right. So I'm gonna hold it up once more just so you can take another look. But I'm really enjoying this one. Um, the cut don't the colors remind like thinking of Ukraine. Don't the colors remind like everywhere now I see blue and yellow. I think of. Ukraine. And I wonder how the old neighborhood is doing. You know, we had neighbors um, who were Ukrainian and we haven't checked in yet to see how they're doing. And my friend Angie works. Um, she does not live in the neighborhood. She actually lives farther away, but she, she works. She's a music teacher at the elementary school there. And I was checking in with her and she said, it's been really hard. The kids are struggling that they, you know, you know, you worry, <laughs> you don't know where, where your family members are and if they're safe. And she said, it's been really, really hard on the kids. So sad to hear about. Blue and yellow always makes me think of Ukrainian motifs because there's a, there were a lot of flags hanging around the neighborhood. And um, we had two big churches. There are three churches, actually, three Ukrainian churches. And um, Ukrainian Orthodox, I guess, is the religion. And yeah, just a lot of cultural references in that neighborhood. So can't not think about Ukraine right now, you know, when you see um, blue and yellow. There's a really beautiful pattern. I was just, who is it by? It's not Ukrainian, but it's blue and yellow. It's a really pretty Huga pattern. I'll see if I can put up a picture here. It's by um, a designer on Etsy and I haven't vetted their shop yet. So um, I'm not sure if they're an inclusive shop or not, but um, you know, that needs to be checked out. They have a pattern that's a huga pattern that's blue and yellow. That's very pretty. I want to say it's like stitching aesthetically or something. I'll link if I'm, I'm going to vet the shop first. And then if they're okay, I will um, link them below and I'll put a picture if they seem to be okay and um, inclusive, then I will put a picture of the huga pattern I'm talking about too. Blue and yellow. It's pretty, it's a pretty com color combo. Okay, um, next whip for whip go. I did my five days on it. It's, um, oh, I didn't give you any, hang on. This is on 18 count Ada. It's Mystic. 18 count Ada picture this plus Mystic. And this is Sulky uh, Thread. The color is Butterscotch. And this is the project that made me kind of fall in love with Sulky because it looks pretty good, doesn't it? When you look real, real close, I can see fabric poking out behind the stitches, but it's it's good enough coverage where, you know, when you hold it far away, it looks awesome, right? 
you don't really notice the fabric poking poking through it's a tight enough stitch okay so my next one was um my modern folk embroidery 2012 oh i found my ink circle my um sorry i'm all over the place i found my pattern my picture for squirrels of sumatra so you can see what it's going to look like so basically like this whole center chunk here i need to do but i brought down this border um, I went down this border and then I started each of these like this. It's almost like a mini border sampler off here to the side. Um, so I've started each of those and then I was working my way down here. So all this fill in has to be done. All these little motifs. Part of me thinks they'll, they'll get stitched up quickly um, because they're like loose individual motifs and there's not much fill in in there, right? There's um, just kind of outliney sort of shapes. But the thing with a lot of ink circles patterns is that not everything in them is symmetric. Like for example, I was stitching this motif and it looks like it should be symmetrical, but it's not. Each side has something different going on. So there's like little differences like that where you have to keep checking the chart that it just takes a little bit longer than you think. Um, anyway. Squirrels of Sumatra by Ink Circles. I, as of this morning, the new numbers hadn't been, I didn't see the new numbers. I checked the WIPGO Instagram um, page and I didn't see the new numbers. So I don't know if it's up again for next month. I kind of hope it is because I've, I've really been enjoying stitching on squirrels. Okay, so my next one is my Modern Folk Embroidery 2021 Stitch Along. And you've seen me through ups and downs on this one. Uh, the fabric I don't mention, the thread is all going to be, so I'm pulling out all the blue eventually, that's what I decided, and it's going to look more like, you have to visualize it looking more like this, because I will use that, it's Threadworks Desert Sunset, and um, the whole thing is going to be monochromatic with that pattern, with that thread. So the blue I'm slowly starting to take out, take it out, here let me fold it, it'll look more like this, if you can picture this all one color. So this month I made it from the, I had done like this side of the tree. So I made it around to the other side of the tree and then I made it to the far end. So yeah, I made it my way across, but I didn't quite get as much as I'd like to have done on this one. I did my five days, but they were, it was just stressful. I, too much work to do. I've been coming home and doing work. So cuts back on my stitching time. So I kind of hope this will be called next month too, because I do enjoy stitching on this one too. Now, um, this was not originally one of my Whipgo picks. I was supposed to be working on my Huga sampler from Patterns Cross Stitch on Etsy, but I decided to go with this one because I wanted to keep picking it up. And now um, that makes all five of my Whipgo projects on 18 Count Ada, which just stitches up quicker. So um, I want to finish this one this year. So I decided to swap it out and put this one as my whip go pick instead. So I think this is what I'll work on um, this afternoon after editing this video is done. I think I'm going to come back to this because I want to work out. I really like how this um, side border is turning out these angles. So I want to work that up and try to work it up towards it would have been January, February towards the March piece. So a January, February, March, April, May. This is June. So I want to do more of June and have it kind of work its way up to March. So the tree looks pretty good, doesn't it? And are you seeing a little bit of a gradient in that background behind the tree? This thread works. It's desert sunset. It's very, very pretty. It's dark, dark, dark brown. Like, you know, the darkest brown DMC. I, I use it sometimes for like hair color. Um, it goes from that to like this rusty orange, which is so pretty really enjoying that. So that's Modern Folk Embroidery. It's the 2021 Stitch Along. I don't know if I've been post. I need to post. I haven't been posting on Instagram very much. I need to post my updates. Okay, next whip is uh, the Stitch Along that I started in January. We are stitching. It's the Kain Kapal Sal. Kain Kapal is an Indonesian ship cloth. It's a traditional woven cloth. And the Fantastic Era, who is Java Cross Stitch on Etsy, she has two, she's from um, the part of Indonesia where this type of weaving originated. 
So it's part of her heritage. And um, she has charted two of these ship cloths. They're usually woven, but she's created cross stitch charts for them. So we are stitching one part each month so that by December, we have a whole piece. So uh, last month we did this top border and then this month we added this red border. Technically, I'm not quite done. Isn't it pretty? It's very pretty, isn't it? That blue and red look good together. And then um, I love like, the repetitiveness of this has been awesome. It's so relaxing to stitch. And it's, um, you know, that sort of carefree stitching. You don't have to keep checking the pattern. When you do the first repeat, you've got it down. You can just keep referencing what you've already stitched. Now, my only... Um, Thing I need to work on with this is that technically there is some back stitching here that I tried to put in and then I pulled out. I didn't like the way it was looking. And Sarah recommended that I need to watch a video. She sent it to me and I haven't seen it yet. I need to watch a video on how to couch my stitches and that will improve the situation. Because like, for example, this very first rectangular motif, let me get it, like these rectangles, see in the middle, that rectangle and that rectangle, that rectangle. They're supposed to have back stitching so that oh, there's a diamond shape that overlaps it. So actually in the middle of each of those geometric things, it's not supposed to be a rectangle. It's supposed to be a diamond that gets back stitched over. So I will try to put in a picture um, of the, the actual finished, you know, the model stitch. So you can see what it looks like. Um, next month, it's super tiny. Next month, we come down, there's a border that comes along each side. So we're doing this border next month. And it is never too late to join in. You can, I, we actually have some, even some Indonesian stitchers who are joining in, which is so cool because they wanted to stitch something from their own heritage. And um, a couple of them, uh, no, not a couple, someone had messaged me and said, oh, you know, I, I'm definitely joining in, in on this. This is amazing. Is it okay if I start in the middle? I don't know if I want, I'm not a top starter. And I said, start wherever. There are no half twos in cross stitch, right? We just do it the way we want to do it. So you can join in anytime you can, um, you know, it's like the, the people who are doing the modern folk embroidery sale from last year, they started this year. It's never too, just do it whenever. But I wanted to show you what it looks like because it, it is just so pretty and it's, it doesn't take up very much room. It's small. I want to say it's about like eight inches across. It's a really small pattern. So when you see the chart, it looks kind of intimidating because the way it's charted, it's just got like a lot of backstitching and fill in and fractional stitches and everything. I didn't do any of the fractional. This technically had some fractionals in the red part. I didn't do them. So I think there's like a little bit of flexibility too in how you can how you can do the stitches. I know stitchers, I think I want to say Miriam and um, Sarah, I can't remember if you're using linen or Ada, but I think Miriam's doing it on Ada and it looks awesome. You could pull it off on Ada and not necessarily do like all the fractional stitches. So um, kind cabal. Now, um, I would recommend this. Uh, Abby Bella Stitch is kicking off the new round of um, Stitch Asia, hashtag Stitch Asia. And uh, Ink Circles, who you know, I if you know me, you know I love Ink Circles. Uh, Tracy Horner has charted a bunch of Kind Kapal, and there's actually a new Kind Kapal coming out for as part of Nashville Needlework Market. And it's beautiful. It's like a red and a pink. It's, it's speaking to me just like Isabella's heart spoke to me. It's got pinks and reds in it. It's really pretty. But maybe consider also if you're going to get one of those. I don't have any of, of those ones because I wanted to stitch one from an actual Indonesian stitcher first. So maybe just think about both. Like have a little bit of both. Tracy Horner is actually really good about when you get one of her patterns, she gives a lot of cultural context. Like she's done her research. I really appreciate that because there are plenty of people who stitch cultural patterns and then provide nothing, like no context. And you don't even know if it's authentic to the culture. So that is something I appreciate with Tracy Horner's patterns. Um, yeah, but also think about supporting like an actual Indonesian stitcher who's stitching something local to them too. It's Java cross stitch and I'll link um, below the um the info to their to this particular pattern okay last whip is a i'll show you really quick a crochet whip just because it's something i experimented on and i think it's kind of cute but i haven't tried it on yet so you know i'm on a cowl kick just because they're quick to crochet so i had leftover yarn 
from the two baby blankets that I made last month for my colleagues. I have two colleagues who are having babies. So for their showers, I made them each a baby blanket. And I, it's this really thick, uh, very soft and thick yarn. And I have a bunch left over because the pattern called for way more skeins than it actually needed. Plus I made, I did make the blankets a little bit smaller in the end too. They were like full size blankets. So I made them like crib size basically. So I had a bunch left. So I wanted to try some Tunisian crochet on it and I love it as a cowl, but it's just so thick. I mean, I don't know if you're seeing the thickness of this. So I don't know how practical this is to wear. I haven't sewn in the, it's a whip because I haven't um, sewn the edges together yet to actually make it a cowl. So I'm not sure yet. Um, sorry, hang on a second here. I'm not sure yet um, how practical it would be. I mean, we've had days that are below zero though, and we go out and shovel and salt and everything. So maybe, maybe I, I, maybe I would wear it. I'm just happy with the stitch, how the stitch turned out. So see how it kind of looks like knitting stitch. That's like the classic thing with Tunisian crochet. And I pulled this off with this. This is all I used to do it. It's a crochet hook. It is size N. It's enormous. Um, which was the called for size hook for this yarn in the blanket pattern that I had used. And with Tunisian crochet, you crochet stitches, but you attach it like you have them hang off the hook, going one direct, going one direction of the row, and then you work them off the hook coming back. So they're called forward passes and back. So on the forward pass, you're adding stitches to the hook. And then on the return pass, you're um, taking them off. So temporarily, I had like a crowded bunch of stitches on here. Basically, the width, you have to picture the width of this. Those stitches were all kind of crowded up on here, but it fit. Okay, I was able to do it. It wasn't an inconvenience. And I didn't need, usually you need like an extender on these hooks to be able to do Tunisian crochet to get all the all the stitches on there that you're working on and off, but I was able to, I wanted to see if I could pull something off with just a hook and it worked. So that's what that looks like. And I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll finish it. Maybe I'll finish this one this weekend. And I'll actually try it on and see, see how that goes. Okay. Uh, we have some new starts to talk about and then plans I'll tell you a little bit about my craftivism fundraiser I'm doing. So let me go grab my finishes and I will be right back. Okay, so uh, finishes. No, not finishes, new starts, quite the opposite, new starts. Okay, so one of these actually was totally unexpected. I had been eyeing it on Instagram and then I thought, well, let me just try it out. And it ended up being so quick. It was just an evening stitch. So, um, there is a magazine brand, I think is what it is, from Japan called Felissimo Couturier. I will link them below. They are starting a mystery sale. It's some kind of like an anniversary sale. So, okay, back up. I'm not 100% sure. They're, they don't seem to be just cross-stitch. They seem to be like a general fiber arts, sewing, stitching, crafting magazine brand. But they are starting a cross stitch stitch along and I will link directly to the page below because um, well it's easy to find if you go to their website it is easy to find um, but anyway I'll link below it's a mystery sale that it's like a mystery forest sale is what they're calling it and it's supposed to be a negative stitching um, pattern it's going to be nine parts and each part is really small each part is like less than 40. It's, I want to say it's like 35 stitch, 30 to 35 stitches for each part, 30 by 30, because the whole piece is supposed to be 105 stitches by 105 stitches, really, really small. And it'll be nine parts, three, three, and three. And so this is the first part right here. And it's just got three animals there. It's got, what do you think that is? Maybe like a squirrel I thought it was a squirrel maybe and then an owl and then like a wolf wolf looking thing down here i do not know what this fabric is i want to say it's spring breeze by mystic fabrics because i remember having a scrap of that i think that's what it is and uh so that's just the first square so there will be two more it'll be going 
this direction here. So there'll be another block here and then another block here and then three and then another three down below. So it'll be a cube or a square when it's done. Now, so the pattern is really negative stitching. So if you look at the examples, I, um, I don't know if I can do it. I will try to copy the Japanese hashtag that people are using to tag this and put it in the description below because if you, in case you want to follow it, it's been really nice. It, I mean, most people are doing the negative stitching on it and it's really, really pretty what people are doing, but I, that seemed too time consuming for me. And I just wanted like a quick, like whip it up in an evening kind of thing. So that's what I did with mine. So I'm only, I'm as stitching the actual motifs. I'm not stitching around the motifs. And I had mentioned earlier and in my last video, I'm trying to use more of my stash. And I have a color and cotton thread stash that has been built up from my club last year. So I went through and I picked up all my brown shades. Check that. Isn't that so, so nice? Like I, now I just want to write down this color palette and write every, like stitch everything. <laughs> um, so these are all different color browns and grays that I picked up because it seemed kind of natural, like nature toned to me. I don't have any greens or anything. I'm just going to keep the whole palette in these colors. So I'm just going to, it's not very organized. I just, you know, there was a brown, dark brown. So I picked that for the tree. It's got a little bit of variegation in it. Are you seeing it? And then, you know, the wolf, I thought about kind of wolf fur, coyote fur. So I kind of picked a lighter color for that. I went sort of squirrely for that. So it's it's not super intentional. I'm just kind of picking, picking as I go. And because the motifs are small, it's barely going to eat up any of my threads. So maybe I can do something, some kind of like an autumn sampler or something with these colors. Uh, the leftover, we'll have to see. So I'm enjoying that a lot. And it's, um, it's not... I mean, it's never too late to join any stitch along, right? I don't know, um, you know, if that pattern is going to disappear or something at some point. It seems to be up. I, so far, just the first part has come out. I can't seem to find any information on when they're releasing each part. Um, the second part hasn't come out yet. The first part came out like around January 18th, I think, and they still haven't put out the second one yet. So it's not, it doesn't seem to be monthly. I'm, j I'm not sure. Um, when it'll be coming out, but I'll be on the lookout for it. Cause I, I enjoyed this one a lot. I'll show you one more time that owl, my lighting's not good. So you're not going to see it, but whatever thread I used for that owl, it has some really beautiful variegation in there. I mean, the, so does the coyote. There's a little bit of, it's like an ecru and a grayish kind of, it's pretty. Love me a color and cotton thread. Okay. Next new start. This was totally unexpected. Okay, so um, I want to say it's Bad Vibes Only is the shop on Etsy. It's Kit is the designer. BIPOC designer, by the way, if you want to um, increase your representation of, you know, whose patterns you're shopping for and stitching. Um, and she's really nice, too. I messaged Kit about some things, and she's, she seems like a really nice person. Anyway. Bad Vibes Only has that heart sampler. Um, it's got like the anatomical heart on it and a bunch of different like heart themed motifs. And I saw it in Steph, um, Stephanie stitching it 24-7. She's doing that one. It's beautiful. And um, I just kind of thought like, so, okay. So I had connected, reconnected with an acquaintance of mine back in December over the holidays. And this is... Um, a childhood acquaintance of mine named Priya. Her parents and my parents were in the same Indian kind of social community. So they saw each other around. They were friends. And Priya is a little bit older than me. She's probably like eight years older than me. Um, so it's not like we hung out or anything as kids. But you know how it is when you have these like large gatherings where a whole bunch of families are there. All the kids sort of hang out. And my memories of Priya are that she was always so nice to all of us. Like even though she was older and she didn't have to hang around with the kids, she was always so nurturing and loving and she included us. And I even remember like a couple of times when Priya would like just hang it, just come and be like, hey, do you and your sister want to like go to the store or go shopping or do something, you know, just doing little social things. And thinking back on it now, I think it's so generous of a like a teenager to do to do that with their time. You know, she she's always been like a very sweet and genuine person. 
And we've kind of, she's the type of acquaintance. I think you have them too, where do you have these people in your life who are wonderful people, but you just, your, your lives aren't in the same, on the same path. Like you're doing different things, but every once in a while they just meet up again. So like every 10 years or so of our lives, we, we would just kind of find a way to reconnect, be like, Oh, Priya, how are you doing? And, um, chat and have like a big catch up. And then it would be like years and years until we saw each other again. Well, Priya reached out to me in December to get our new address since we moved last year and we got to talk in and she heard both her parents passed like, um, within the past few years, all during COVID. And it's been a lot to handle, you know? So we got to just talking about a lot of things and, um, she recommended a show for me to watch it. It's, um, I should recommend it to you too. It's on HBO max, I think. And it's called happy happiness or the path to happiness. Um, it's a four part sort of like a documentary show exploring how different cultures stay happy, like do what they do for happiness. And one episode is about Americans who are retiring in Mexico and how they stay happy and what it's like, how you, um, like, you know, growing old and retiring is like a whole new beginning, a whole new life. You know, you, you live a whole new life depending on the choices you make. They did one episode where um, they were in Japan talking about parenting and how to um, instill kind of independence in their kids culturally. Um, they did one in Korea about workaholics and how to balance work life. So each one had something kind of interest. Each episode had something interesting. I'll try to put the name of it below. Anyway, Priya had recommended that show to me and we got to talk. And anyway, so I found out that Priya, I just kind of asked her, I'm like, what do, you, what do you do? She's like, oh, I do a lot of crafting on, on my off time. So then when I saw Steph's video and I thought, oh, I do want to stitch that heart sampler. And I wonder, like Priya mentioned, she does cross stitch. She's done it not in a long time, but she used to when she was younger with her mom. Her mom cross stitched a lot, like big pieces. So I just kind of reached out to Priya earlier this month and I said, hey, Priya, would you want to? do like a stitch along and she's like what's a stitch along?" <laughs> and so I showed her the pattern well it turns out Priya is a pediatric cardiologist she's like do you know how perfect this pattern is for me I want to do that she's she got away from practicing she works for a pharmaceutical company now because during COVID like and with her parents and everything it was just too much um but that's where her interest is still. And she's like, this is awesome. Yes, let's do this. And I even sent her, <laughs> she lives in Baltimore. So I even sent her like, oh, let's see if there's a local needle workshop near you. And there is one. I don't remember what it's called, but she's already been to her LMS. <laughs> she picked up some 30 count linen to do for, anyway, so we, we did a, um, like a little zoom stitch and chat to get started on. And we had a nice catch up and we're going to do another one tomorrow. We're just going to try to check in weekly. Um, just to, to stitch on this thing together. So I too have started the anatomical heart sampler by Kit, who is bad vibes only, and it's not going to resemble anything so far. This is all I have. So this is part of the heart, it, like right in the center. I'll see if I can, I'll throw a picture up if I can, right in the sort of central area. Yeah. Cause we started in the center, right in the center is the anatomical heart. And that's where Priya wanted to start. I was like, well, do you want, I usually start at the top. She's like, no, let's start with the heart. That's like the main part of it. So, so we started in the center and this is a, okay. What's the fabric? It's a hand dyed by Rolanda. And I have had this sitting in my stash since gosh, forever, since last summer not knowing what to do with it. So now the called for fabric is actually like a pink, but both Priya and I are using different colors. She's using like a, an off white beigey color. And I'm using this one. And I think it's going to be great because the whole, all of it is just um, white and red and pinks. <laughs> Another pattern that I'm drawn to with white and red and pink. So, so far it's just, it doesn't look like much of anything yet. And um, you know, we, we were just talking, <laughs> we got to talk in. So um, we didn't get a whole lot of stitching done <laughs> and I wasn't sure, like we were just getting a feel of the vibe too. Like I, I think I could have probably put in more stitches, but I didn't want to work super far ahead because Priya basically only got like six stitches in cause she did. Um, so she told me kind of an interesting thing that you might as stitchers, you might be interested in this. She and her mom, so her mom used to cross stitch a lot, right? They used to buy kits and, they would spend, she said they would spend a whole day just prepping threads from the kits. 
So they would come on like the, you know, the paper, the cardboard or the paper all kind of like looped onto there, right? They would take all of the thread off of a certain color. Her mom, she and her, they would do this together. It was really nice. She shared this tradition they would do. They would pre-divide the strands. So if they were stitching two strands, they would already separate out all the two strands and then bobbinate them like, like individual. So they would take two strands, bobbinate it, take another two strands off, bobbinate it, and then take the last two strands, bobbinate it, and then take the next floss, six strands, separate out two strands, bobbinate. So they, so that like every time they were taking something off the bobbin, it was already just two strands. And she said, she almost talked about it. Like it was a, like a, a bonding thing. Like they just enjoyed kind of sitting quietly um, chatting, prepping, prepping their threads. And I'd never heard that before. And I just thought it was like a nice memory. I really enjoyed hearing about that. I appreciated that besides talking about all kinds of other things, we could talk about stitchy stuff too. So, so we'll see how that goes. I don't want to, so basically what I'm getting at is Priya took her time prepping her threads on our call and she, it was only like in the last 10 minutes, she put a few stitches in and I, um, I don't want to move too far ahead. You know what I mean? I want to try to, you know, I don't want to, I don't know. I don't want her to, to feel like overwhelmed or feel like, you know, bad that she's not keeping up or something. You know what I mean? I don't, I want to, I'm going to play that by ear. So we'll see how that goes. And I'm only stitching on that when she and I are chatting together. So this probably won't see much progress very quickly, but it's really fun. And I messaged Kit and I told her, this is an awesome pattern. We're going to, um, you know, we're excited to stitch this together. It's going to like, it's going to be fun. And I said, you know, are you, do or I asked her, are you doing anything else? And she's like, oh yeah, I have plans to do a leaf sampler <laughs> this year. I'm so excited about that. I hope, I hope she can pull it off. So please um, support her, a, a very rare BIPOC designer, please support her. And um, she's from somewhere in Canada. I want to say Ottawa, maybe. I don't remember, uh, but I'll link her shop below her Etsy shop and let's hope she designs even more. And if it's a leaf sampler, look out, everyone. We're going to do it. We are going to do it. Okay. I So that was some enabling from Steph, Stephanie from Stitching It 24-7. I have Steph's. She made me this. I've showed you in my last video. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. Do you see that? Um, stay safe at home and stitch. She put it on a little stake. It's so cute. So I have it up there. Um, let's talk about more enabling because Kim cataloging my stitches, she, in her last video, she had a really great last video. She always has like these amazing finishes. She stitches some really pretty stuff. She is doing this Firefly sampler, Firefly, the TV show, <laughs> not the, um, critter. And, uh, I loved, it. I've seen it on Etsy. I've seen that Firefly sampler and I think it's amazing, but I haven't watched that show. I've only seen like two episodes and it's totally my kind of show. I love sci-fi and I'm kind of lighthearted, you know, that kind of fantasy sci-fi. And I don't know why I haven't gone back to it. We need to, maybe we'll, maybe we'll watch some of that today. Anyway, so I've never really thought about stitching that particular sampler because I don't have the connection with the show. But Steve and I started our rewatch of Fringe, which is one of my all-time favorite shows. It's in my top five for sure. And it's like moving. It's 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 so good. It's amazing. So it's um, basic premise is there's a, a scientist and an FBI agent who come together because they're trying to get to the bottom of these sort of supernatural, unexplained things that are happening and lots of stuff ensues. So it's an awesome show. And I thought, well, Kim's stitching something TV related. And I feel inspired to do that too. So I am doing, uh, Oh gosh, I didn't, I'm so unprepared for the video today. I was going to give you all kinds of interesting info and references and I have nothing ready. I will link all the information below though. <laughs> so I am doing a font stitch, like words, I'm stitching words. And what I'm going to do, it doesn't look like much of anything yet. On one side, so on this side here, I'm going to stitch the names of our four main characters. So it'll say Olivia. Olivia and it'll have an ampersand here I need to do. Olivia and Peter and Astrid and Walter. You know those t-shirts? 
that have like the names of the people and then the ampersands and you don't need to see anything else. You can just tell what it is. Well, I looked that up. There is, um, I should have brought my very unprepared. I have, we have a soccer one with the like names of, it says like Landon and I don't remember who else. It's a U.S. soccer team one from the World Cup a few years ago. But um, get your thoughts together. What are you saying? There is a graphic design company from the Netherlands called Jet Set, Experimental Jet Set, I think. I will find them and I'll link them below. But they're the ones who created that, that idea of just using names and ampersands. And they did it because they were um, given a job to create a t-shirt for the Beatles. And so they kind of thought about it. What, what images would we use? What could we do? And they said, well, let's just strip it down to just the four names. So John and Paul and George and Ringo. And it became so wildly popular, just names, right? But the idea that you don't need images, just those four, if you take just the names, it like evokes all of these memories and emotion and association. And um, so then people started taking that idea and making their own, you know, like t-shirts for different representing characters on TV shows or band, people in bands or people on teams or, and people started sending in, they actually really embraced it. They didn't, they, they weren't offended that people were using that motif in, in my mind, in their minds, they were actually kind of boggled. They're like, this isn't even a complicated design. It's so simple. Like how can people be connecting with this so much? And so they actually have, um, I'll link below. They have a page on their blog where they started putting pictures of people who created their own versions and sent it in. So that's what I'm using. I'm using that concept and I'm stitching on one side, the four name, the, the side, the four names of our um, main characters, Olivia and Peter and Astrid and Walter. This isn't spoilery. You're going to find out right away if you start watching it. it it's in the, within the first couple episodes part of the big part of the storyline is that there's an alternate universe. So there's a copy of our universe, uh, not alternate parallel universe. And in that universe, um, our same characters live there, but things have, things have happened that make, um, that changed the course of events on that side. So things are a little bit different. It's the same people, but they're living slightly different lives because of with things that happened. I won't say much more than that. So what I'm going to do on this, on this side is because it's a parallel universe, I'm going to stitch their names in reverse, um, going the other way. And I'm going to use their, they have like the characters on our side of the, of the universe have nicknames for their doppelgangers on the other side. So that's what I'm going to stitch over here. So Olivia, the nickname for her doppelganger is faux Olivia, like fake Olivia. And then Walter down at the bottom, his doppelganger is called Walternit. That's the nickname they have for him. So that's what I'm going to stitch. And Peter has to be in a different color. I won't say why. Um, if you watch it, you'll find out. But anyway, so this has just been fun to stitch on and it's easy stitching. Um, I do not remember the name of the designer of the font, but I got it on Etsy and I will link them below. It's, I basically searched for those t-shirts are made with a Helvetica font. So I searched for Helvetica font cross stitch chart and that's the closest one that came up. So I, let me look up the name and I'll link it below because you might want to use it. The only thing I would say is that they're very large. So the height, like this O right here is about 40 stitches tall. So it makes for a big piece, but I don't care. I'm super excited about it. I think it's going to be amazing. And um, this has been a very interesting exercise in sort of um, tweaking patterns to make them work for you. So what I did was the font pattern came with a PDF file, right? And you have the whole alphabet, lowercase and uppercase. So I um, I used my snipping tool on my PC, you know, um, snip and sketch. You can, uh, it's a tool you can use where it basically lets you take a snapshot photo, like clip a clip, clip and make a photo of anything that's on your desktop. So if I have my PDF file up, I can snip each letter that I need and make a copy of it to put in a Word document. So that's what I did. So I snipped out, for example, for Olivia's name. 
I went to the capital O and I snipped a picture of it and then put that O in a Word document. And then I snipped a picture of the lowercase L, put it in a Word document. So that in my Word document, I have each letter that I need. Instead of like going, looking at each letter in the alphabet, I actually had the letters I need and needed in the order that I needed. Then because I'm stitching letters in reverse on this side, when you have an image file in Microsoft Word, you can right click on it and or go to the like picture menu and you can flip it. So if you ever have something like that, where you have a PDF pattern, but you want to do like mirror images of it and the something about the pattern is like, uh, like the one side of the motif is not symmetrical, right? So like, um, let's say you have this, right? Or no, what's a good one? Let's say you have this and you want to do like the mirror image of it you could snip this picture from the PDF and then flip it horizontally so that you have that. So um, I, that was, it took a little bit of time, like a couple hours one evening just to sort it out and get all the letters I needed and make sure they could flip. But it, I think it's gonna work amazing. It's gonna be perfect to do it. So that's how I did this F. So in my Word document, I took this letter F, snipped it, and then I flipped it horizontally. So then I can just look at, I don't have to do it in my head. The flipping, I don't have to do in my head. The actual chart is being flipped um, so that I can just, I can just read the chart and stitch it the way it's charted. So super happy with that one. I'm going to keep that up. What am I using? Um, this is an Edinburgh linen where it's, I had actually started and ditched Galliana design, Chris, Galliana Christmas thing, which is actually really pretty, but I didn't have enough thread. The threads I was using were like these special variegated threads that I had bought on Etsy and I didn't have enough to do the whole thing. So I got frustrated and I ditched it, but it's an, it's a smoke blue Edinburgh linen. I'm using the other side of it and um, the thread colors this is a thread work. The red is thread works, uh, but I do not remember which one. This blue is DMC 939. This is also a thread works, but this is coming out. I have to change this. It, it will be a different, Peter's name will be a different color, but it's not that color. And um, I chose these colors because on the show, when they have episodes that are on either side of the, like, when the episodes are in our universe, our side of the parallel universe, the opening credits are blue. <laughs> so that's our side. And then when the um, episodes take place in the parallel universe, the opening credits, it's the same opening credits, but they change to red. So I changed these to red. So it's, that's what it's reflecting. So, so it's kind of fun to geek out on something like that. I love that show and I can't recommend it highly enough. The only thing is that the crime scene, so like it's the supernatural crimes that happen, right? So there's these unexplained things that happen. There are some things that are sort of like gross when it comes to bodily stuff that I have to look away sometimes. I don't really like gore, like gory kind of disgusting sort of stuff, but it's very minor. You can look away for two seconds and look back. And I wouldn't like, I don't like it anywhere else. Like if it's in a because it's supernatural, I think I explain it away in my head and I can deal with it. But if it's something real, like a real detective show with a real crimes, I find that much more disturbing. But okay, is that all my starts? It is. Let me grab some info about my plans. And okay, shall we talk plans? Um, next month is super exciting. I don't, I don't know what go numbers yet. I'm sure they're coming out like in the next couple days. So I'll work on that. I'm thinking about joining Garon Designer Focus because they're doing um, Rosewood Manor next month. And I do have a sunset pattern by them that I want to work on. Um, but the real exciting thing is that I'm doing my next craftivism fundraiser. And I've been thinking about this one for a long time. I knew I was going to do something in March because March 3rd or 4th is International Women's Day or maybe 5th it's coming up and uh, I'm going to leave the fundraiser open all month for that. The cause is amazing. It's for a group called Expanding Lives. I know the person, the director of the program. She's a French teacher in the area. So that's how we met. And she was in the Peace Corps. Okay, let's back up. So Expanding Lives is an organization where part of the volunteers are here in, in the Chicago area and part of the volunteers are on the ground in 
Niger and Benin, which are two countries in West Africa. And their goal is to um, work in the most rural, um, kind of the um, farthest away from city, rural areas of Niger and Benin, and to find girls who really want to continue their education and go to school, but who are left um, without the opportunities to go to school for lots of reasons, and it connects them with chances to continue their education. So um, Leslie, who is the director of Expanding Lives, she spent some time in the Peace Corps in, the, in Niger, and she was volunteering in a school. She lived with a very rural family, so she saw what life was like there, and they were, they were doing fine, you know, they were, they, um, my impression is that the families, they were basically living for um, everything they did was about their their daily survival. So like they grew everything that they consumed. So they, it's not like they were going grocery shopping or things like that. You know, they, they raised and grew and processed everything that they consumed, if that makes sense. And so one of the challenges for girls in these areas, well, so what Leslie noticed is that she got, she had opportunities to work in elementary school, volunteer in elementary school, middle school, and high school. And she said in elementary school, lots of girls, middle school, a lot fewer girls. By the time it was high school, almost no girls. And there were several reasons for that. She, um, kind of talked to a lot of people and observed and, um, you know, met a lot of people in the community. And basically there's several reasons. Um, one is that when girls start puberty, there's not always the supplies or materials needed for a girl to be able to leave her home and go a far distance to school and stay, you know, hy hygiene is hard to do there. That's one. Another reason is once a girl reaches puberty, there are concerns about her being taken advantage of, or is it safe, um, you know, sexually for her to be out and about. Um, but the bigger concern is that all of that work, when you're, when you are living a type of lifestyle where you produce everything that you live on, it's not like you go to the supermarket and buy flour, right? Someone in your household is harvesting grains, pounding grains, making flour and then cooking the food. So a lot of that work, like the labor of just the production of stuff is done by girls. And so a lot of families keep their girls home the older they get because they just, they handle all that. They're going to get water. They're doing all this stuff. And so a lot of really promising girls who want to continue their education don't get an opportunity to do that. Some of these rural areas are also, um, you know, the tradition there is to marry girls off very early so that then they do that household work for someone else. And so um, this organization, Expanding Lives, works with a, a, an organization on the ground called MICA, and they, ident they work with all the rural local schools to just identify girls that show promise and that want to keep going, that are being held back by their families or communities because of all these concerns. And the coolest thing about it is that here, the Chicago team raises money to cover all the school fees, supplies, transportation, so that money does not stand in the way of girls going to school. And we're talking about like the American dollar goes a far distance there, right? So for, you know, a couple hundred dollars, you're paying for a girl's college education for a year. So it goes a far, much farther, covers a lot more. Um, but the the team on the ground, the really cool thing they do is when they identify a girl who they want in the program, who they want to support going to school and continuing on her education, they also visit those communities and do a whole bunch of programming for the community. So they're teaching about health, hygiene, um, women, very, a lot about women's health. They're teaching the community about what it's like to send girls to school because there aren't a lot of girls. The statistic they give on the Expanding Lives website is it's something like in, from these rural areas in West Africa, in particular Niger Benin, it's like 2% of women go on to higher education, 2% of women. 
So there just aren't many examples of women who've done this. So communities are a little scared. It's it's unfamiliar. So they have girls come, women come and talk to these communities about what it's like. What can it do for you community if you have one of your girls go to school and get educated and come back and bring all that knowledge? So they're just doing some amazing work. And I think it's an awesome way to support girls and women. I'm so, Leslie is one of my hero, my all time heroes. I think she is just such an inspiring person. I actually had, when I first met her, this was many years ago, I had her, we met at a, we all, we French teachers in the Illinois, Northern Illinois, we all, we all know each other. We bring, we belong to the same professional group. So we all see each other all over all the time. And so I met her at a program and I said, Ooh, come talk to my students. Cause I want them to hear about this. Um, for, so parts of West Africa are Francophone because they were colonized by the, by the French. And, um, now a lot of countries in West Africa are speaking more like focusing on their local languages, which is awesome, which is what it should be. Um, but they're also um, in big cities. There's still a lot of French spoken and in schools, they speak French too. Anyway, I wanted her to come talk about all this to my students and my students, <laughs> the day when she came to talk to my students, she probably did the same presentation, like five or six to however many classes I had, right? Cause she spoke to all my classes Every period, the students and me, because I'd heard the pr presentation multiple times, but it didn't matter. We were all just sitting like this. We just, we were soaking up every single word she had to say. She's just such an inspiring person. So I'm raising money for expanding lives. We're going to support some girls going to school. And uh, I don't a hundred percent know what I'm going to stitch on yet, but I think it's, I really, really wanted to stitch on a design with a black girl or a woman designed by a BIPOC stitcher. And I just haven't found that. I've been looking and looking. If you know of a BIPOC designer who has a pattern with a black girl or black woman, please let me know because I want to be supportive of that. I want to keep like all the money within that, um, you know, rep within a representation diverse kind of minded um, community. Until then, I think I'm going to start on Kesslin's Quiet Strength, just because it's a girl and I think it's relevant to, um, you know, to the cause. So um, I, I did find one, actually one shop um, with a BIPOC designer on Etsy, but their shop, they haven't let go of all their Harry Potter patterns yet. And I can, it's hard. For, I, I That's a hard line I draw. If I can't invite my LGBTQIA2S plus fellow stitchers to shop at the shop. I, I cannot recommend the shop. And the designer and I, we've had a couple chats about it and they're just not ready. They have one pattern left. They haven't dropped and they're not ready to do it yet. So I can't, I can't shop there and I can't talk about it yet, but I'm going to be monitoring it and make, see if they make any changes. I do have a couple patterns there that I think would be perfect for this. So until then, I think Kesslin's is awesome. They're, they're, um, you know, they've increased representation in our stitching by putting this pattern out there. So I think that's amazing. Uh, I think the new Rosina Dizzery is amazing too. I thought about that one as well. Um, so I'm going with this one. I'm going to give it a go. And I chose a bright, so I'll show you again. It's basically a full coverage piece. Um, her whole outline is all full coverage. So like this back here is fabric and then this in here is fabric. Um, but her whole body is full coverage. So I thought, what if I put it on a bright, I, I'm thinking of like bright futures, right? They're, they have something bright to look forward to. So I chose my brightest fabric that was in my stash, which is Rubius by Picture This Plus. I, I don't know what direction this is. <laughs> I think this is the direction. Anyway, this is what, so her face, imagine her face. So imagine her face, but with that bright color fabric all around it. So it's going to be a gray and, and it's all grays. It's grays and dark colors um, on this fabric. So that's, that's how it's looking so far. And uh, I'll be curious to see how that turns out. This is a 36 count linen and I'm using the called for DMC colors on it. I'll hold it up a little bit closer. It doesn't look like anything yet. I started right in the middle. We're basically getting to like the fabric. I'm like right over here. So it doesn't, it doesn't look like anything yet on the fabric, but so anyway, that's where I'm at. 
um, with that. So please think about contributing. So what I will link to the fundraiser will be open all month. Uh, there are about 400 hundred of you who follow me. So I think it'd be pretty awesome if like everybody would donate five bucks. <laughs> we need my goal is a thousand dollars because in Bena, they are going to they're starting to plan a huge conference for rural girls and their their family members. And they're going to cover everything. They're going to talk about women's health, how to you know continue on with school, all this kind of stuff that they do. It's a big girls conference. And they're anticipating needing about $2,000 to pull off that whole conference. And I think they're inviting about 50 girls. It'll cover um, fee, like all the fees and all the supplies, all the food, everything they need to do for about 50 girls. I think I have to double check with Leslie. It'll be $2,000 total. And I'm raising a thousand of that to help them put that conference on. So please think about giving something. The other cool thing I want to do, could you mark... Um, well, if this interests, if Stitch and Chats interest you, could you keep in mind, let me look up the date. Could you maybe pencil in the weekend of March 26th and 27th? I don't know which day yet, but I'm pretty sure that's when it's going to be. I have asked Leslie if she can do a one hour Stitch and Chat with us because the, the true power of all that, you have to hear her stories and you she knows all of these girls. So the girls who go through the program, they 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 call them scholars. So all of these scholars, she knows them all so closely. She's had deep conversations with them and they've been doing this for more than 10 years. So she just knows all these girls and has all these stories. And she has her own time that she spent in Niger. She's such a moving person to listen to. And I think like with all the darkness we've been in lately, don't we need like an uplifting story? She will just make you feel good. Like knowing her will make you feel good. So I asked her if she would do a one hour stitch and chat with us. And I want to invite anyone who donates anything. If it's just like five bucks or more, whatever, whatever amount you're able to donate, I want to send an invite to all of you to join us for a stitch and chat. And I think I'm going to do, I'm not a great event planner, but I think Leslie's story is so moving. I want to make sure it's heard from her lips and from the girl, we'll try to play some videos of the girls too. And um, yeah, I want you to hear from her all about it, her experience. And so um, I asked her if she'd be willing to do this. And you know what she said? Her first thing was, she's like, oh yeah, that'd be great. Can I bring my knitting? And I said, yes, you can. <laughs> you can bring your knitting. So she's a knitter too. So it'll be fun. We'll just stitch and I, I'll prepare just a couple of questions to ask her so she can tell us about it, And we'll take questions from you. I think we'll do it whether there are just two or three of us or whether there's a whole bunch of us, we'll just go ahead and do it. It can be as small or as big as it, is, as it ends up being. Sarah already, I asked Sarah if she would help me moderate it. So she's going to help me with that. So let's try it. Let's see. I'd love for you to meet Leslie and hear more about that story. So, um, okay. So how do you donate? I set it up as a Facebook fundraiser. I'm hoping that will reach a lot of people because I know a lot of you belong to Facebook stitching groups. So I'm hoping that's part of it. If you're not, um, I totally understand. I've had a lot of contacts of mine stop using Facebook and I, besides doing these craftivism fundraisers, I don't really use it either. Um, so if you're not on Facebook, what I will do is I will link the Facebook fundraiser below. That's public. Anybody can see it. And, but you have to be on Facebook to donate through that. So if you're not on Facebook, just donate directly to Expanding Lives and just make a comment that you're donating as part of Daybreak Stitchery, as part of this craftivism fundraiser. And then I will touch base with them and see who's donated as part of this so that you can still get the um, Zoom invite to the Stitch and Chat. So how does that all sound? Hopefully <laughs> that sounds interesting to you. I mean, I feel like I don't need a whole lot of excuses to join a Stitch and Chat if I have time and if I can plan ahead, I try to join. So I hope you will too. Pencil in that weekend. What did I say it was? March um, 26th or 27th. It's either a Saturday or Sunday morning. I have to see when Leslie's free. And um, it'll be really quick. It'll just be an hour, I think. That's all. We'll have time to manage. If it works out, what I'd like to do is just have some, I'm going to try to contact some shops and see if I can raffle, get some stuff to raffle off to. So we'll do some little raffles. Um, we'll talk to Leslie. We'll stitch. We'll have our coffee. It'll be a more, I think it'll be a morning thing. Um, yeah. 
That's the plan. I think it'll be really fun. And we're going to be doing something amazing, helping these girls out, giving them a chance. It's what we would want. I, I, as I said on my Facebook post this morning, it's what we would want for all the girls in our lives too, right? Our, our, my cousins and the daughters of my friends and um, my stu my, my students, I would want them to have these opportunities too. So every girl gets that chance to, to um, make what they want of their lives, you know? So that's where we're at. I'm going to link everything below and I think I'm done for, for the month. So uh, keep reading, keep learning. Let's keep doing that. Let's keep standing up for things. Let's keep stitching and let's keep um, encouraging each other and being there for each other too. Uh, I hope you have a good rest of the month and uh, I'm going to check in with you. I'll, I will may, I may make like a little video if we get our information sorted out for the stitch and chat. What I might do is just make a quick little video during March. Uh, once I have all that info, just to let you know how that's going to work. Uh, I think that might be easier than making an Instagram post about it. So look out for a little bit more info from me and uh, I hope to see you and chat with you all soon. Thanks so much for tuning in as always. Um, have a good day. I'll see you.